Hello, and welcome back to the course. So this is going to be module five, and so this module is going to be all about classes. Um, so classes in Python, if you're coming from another language, are going to be a little bit different, especially if you're coming from something like Java. Uh, there's going to be a fair few differences, so definitely be sure to uh, not just skip over this if you already know what a class is. Um, <clears throat> but if you don't know what a class is, uh, it's kind of, it, it's a way of packaging um, data and functions um, so that they can be used and it, there's a lot of different techniques for making good classes and a bunch of other stuff that, that's important to consider when creating classes uh, and so I'll try and get through as much of that as I possibly can but definitely if you want to get good at using classes um, it just takes time practice and um, and a lot of reading to read up on kind of techniques and that sort of stuff so I'll leave some additional readings in the uh, in the actual reading itself for you to take a look at and get a better grasp of classes as a whole and also Python classes. <clears throat> so before I jump into it, there's um, one thing that's going to be pretty useful. I've put in here uh, at the top here just a note um, where I have a glossary at the very bottom. And so if you're currently watching the video, if you just scroll down to the bottom here, there's a glossary that has a bunch of the terminology I'm going to look at, so be sure to check the video description if you're on YouTube and go there if you have any questions about what something means. <clears throat> and also, I have a note in here talking about uh, f-strings. Uh, we're not going to need to use dates because we're going to be using a different example, uh, probably going to be running a different example than the one that's in the notes, but uh, f-strings for sure is going to be useful and so that can be found in the extras module, uh, but I'm just going to do a quick run through here as well. So uh, f-strings are basically, so f-string stands for format strings, <clears throat> and what it is is it's a way of putting content uh, into a string and loading it from a variable. So for example, like before we've had something where we might have name, and we have something like this where it's a print, hello, and then a comma, name. And so we're passing hello and the name variable to the string. And let me just do Python module five.py, and then we get hello here. And so this is all well and good, but let's say, for example, we're doing something more complicated where we have, like, let's say, the temperature and time is equal to, I don't know, 10, 50, temperature is equal to 20 degrees or something like that, right? And then we're saying hello, whatever the time is time and the temperature is temperature and so you can see here when we have something that's like this long it's although it for although because I've just written it this makes more sense when you come back and look at it later on um, it's kind of hard to tell which parts are variables especially without syntax highlighting if you're just looking at this in a um, if this is on a server somewhere and you're just reading the text as plain text, it makes it really hard to tell what's a variable and what isn't. And so a better way of doing this is actually if I just delete this, I'll just delete everything in here. And so what we can do is we can use the things that I mentioned before called, uh, there we go, f-strings. So the way that f-strings works is if I go ahead and put curly brackets around all of the things that are meant to be variables, and then put an F, you'll see the, the syntax highlighting just changed here. Um, then we know for sure that this is referencing a variable. And so now when we go ahead and do this, we get the exact same thing. We get all of the variables are being inserted into here, and it works uh, really well. The other advantage to doing this as well is that we can do things like, say we have random, um, and let's say we have and your age is, we can actually call functions in here as well. So random.randint, just like that, for example. Oh, and I'm gonna have to put a range on that. Let's say 18 to 20, oh, whoops. My bad, let's just say uh, 18 to 25, somewhere between there. And then when we go through, it'll generate this, and it says your age is 22, so we can actually call functions directly inside there, right? And then we get different ones each time. Um, one thing to keep in mind with these is that they're built, well, actually, okay. 
We'll get into more details of this in the extras module, so if you want more details on how f-strings work, you can take a look at, the, at that module. Um, let's just get back into classes. This is just one thing to keep in mind because you'll see me writing with this syntax. And so all that it means is that basically everything inside the curly brackets is a variable. Okay, cool. All right. So let's go ahead and let's move on to actual classes. Uh, classes, like I said before, they're, uh, they're a way of bundling data, which is called attributes, and functions, which are sometimes called methods, into abstractions. So the example that I have in here is an animal. And so the way that this works is um, it follows the same rule of indentation as everything else that we've seen. So we have class and then whatever the class name is. And then we have a function that we've defined inside of this. There's a special function called uh, double underscore init, double underscore. And <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of syntax, but let me just show you what this is used for first, and then we'll move into the syntax a little bit more. So what we can do with this now that we have a class called animal is we can actually go ahead and we can do something like, um, I think I had an example in there with a leopard gecko. And so because I don't want to have to look up all the information again, we'll just go in here and quickly pull this up. So yes, we did. So this might look a little bit weird, but basically all that I've done here is I've just moved everything like that. So um, within here, you can see we're saying, well, oops, we're saying leopard gecko is equal to leopard gecko. There we go. So leopard gecko is equal to an animal, and then we're giving it uh, the information that's going to be passed to this double underscore init double underscore function. So we're passing it the species name is right here. So that corresponds to the species name. This list corresponds to the regions. And this string corresponds to the common name. And so um, what, now that we have this, what we can actually do is we can do um, print, let's say, leopard gecko dot species name, just for example. Right. So when we come in here, we get the species name back. And so what's actually happening here is um, we're doing what's called an instantiation. So we're actually creating what's called an instance of an animal class. So the leopard gecko is called an instance of the animal class. And what that means is that this class definition here is basically being used as like a cookie cutter. <clears throat> If you want to think about it this way, this is a good analogy for it. Uh, so this is like a template or like a cookie cutter, and then this would be the resulting document or the actual cookie that gets cut from the cutter. <clears throat> so it's a way of formalizing um, data uh, as well as also being able to specify certain um, what are called methods, which basically are functions. And within those functions, you can make it use its own values to do things. Uh, so the example that I think I used was we can actually create a function inside here, or it's called a method, I guess. That's called um, let's say print info. And so this isn't gonna this isn't gonna be completely obvious, but what we'll do is I'll do it and then explain it. So print. find a function that's called print info and you'll see in both these places we've put self and so if you're coming from Java you can think about this kind of like the keyword this um, it's similar to the way that it also works in JavaScript but JavaScript has some weird things so it's not exactly one-to-one -one. but basically what it means is that um, like I said this is the cookie cutter <clears throat> and so once we actually cut the cookie obviously each one's gonna have different values so we can have this leopard gecko or we could have 25 different animals with all different information. They don't have to be the same um, because each of these is its own thing, is its own instance, is what's called a uh, technical term. And so what self is, is self is basically a way of referencing its own, 
its own variables because basically it's creating its own variables on each of the instances to be able to be used again. So when we're giving it this, um, I, I can't say that. When we're saying common library <laughs> gecko here, um, it's passing it over to common name and then that common name is being assigned to self thought common name. And so what that's doing is it's making it so that if we had another animal instance, um, they don't conflict because it's not, it's, it, it's its own variable basically. And so self is the way of delineating that it's its own, what's called instance variable. And so there's a couple in here, so the species name, region, and common name. And so all that I've done with this uh, method is I've just passed it itself, which you have to do for most functions that you're going to be putting inside classes. Uh, you have to pass itself if you want to be able to use any of its own variables. <clears throat> and so with that, now, instead of doing printing this leopard gecko dot species name, we can use the leopard gecko instance and just run the dot print info command, right? And there we go. So now it's running that code that's inside there where it's doing the F string and it's printing everything that's in there. So this might look a little bit familiar, especially after I've now just done this, that you might be thinking, well, what about when I do something like, for example, if I say shopping list and I give it something, and I say, you know, eggs, ham, and sausage, right? So when I have this shopping list, whenever I want to add something to it, I always just use something like shopping list dot append, right? This looks pretty f similar to this, right? It's the same sort of um, syntax here. And that's actually because everything, so you've actually you've been using classes this entire time without actually knowing that you've been using classes. So every time that you create a variable, what's actually happening is it's doing this. It's doing exactly what I've just shown you here, where it's saying animal this. Um, so instead of doing what I've done here, I can actually just say, for example, list, and then do that, right? And it would be the exact same idea. This list is a class, right? You can actually see here when I hover over it, it says class list. Um, and uh, that, that's how we create things, right? So everything that we've done, so strings are objects, ints are objects, literally everything that we've created so far has been some sort of an object. <clears throat> and so when we're calling dot append, we're actually calling the dot append function on the list itself. And so uh, another word for instance, which is more commonly used in Python is object. And so um, I'm gonna be using the term instance, but it means a function of the same thing when you're talking to a lot of people. <laughs> and so basically this is kind of the basis for a lot of things in Python. Uh, and as you've seen here, it can you can end up getting some really powerful things to happen with this, right? Uh, you have, for example, in this animal class, basically with these three, um, what are called attributes, uh, some people call them instance variables, some people call them attributes. It depends on which language you come from, both are valid. Um, but basically, with these three attributes that are given here, I can describe literally thousands, like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of different types of animals, right? There's uh, almost an unlimited number of species that I could describe just with these three um, bits of information here. And so you can use this to basically create any sort of animal you want, right? And so that's the real power of classes, is it's basically a way of organizing your data together uh, is, is what it's most commonly used for. And kind of one of its best use cases is um, packaging data together in a uh, in what's called a schema or an organized way that's understood, basically. And so um, this becomes very powerful, especially when you're building much larger applications, because you can imagine, right, you're building some huge, you know, 12 million line project, right? You can't see any of this code, and you just come down here to try and uh, add some stuff in. You could probably do this with a list, like if you really wanted to, you could probably just do this if you wanted to. You could say like, oh, I have a list, Oops. I have a list that I can put my stuff in there, and like, oh, this looks pretty good, but then maybe further down the road, you're doing the same thing, right? You can't see any of the code that I've just written beforehand because you're in a different file or something. And now you have leopard gecko here and you're trying to remember, oh, is it 
is it common name first? Maybe, yeah, okay, I'll put common name first, right? Because that's the one that comes first, and then it's species name, it's not the other way around. So you can see how easily it is to get this mixed up, right? Because <clears throat> when you hover over this, it just says list, there's no, no helpful information. Whereas, with the, uh, with the animal one here, you can see, as you're trying to write this out, like if I go ahead and try and write this out, right? It's going to, as I'm looking at it, it's gonna tell me what I need to give it. I need to give it a species name, I need to give it a region, and I need to give it a common name, right? So I know exactly what I need to do. Uh, I actually forgot to add, there's supposed to be one more indent between each of those, whoops, my bad. Um, and so now when I'm looking at this, I can see, I can see, okay, so I need a species name, and it's a string, so whatever the species name is, there it is, okay. Uh, the next one that I need is regions, and that's a list of strings, okay, so I can put a list, and I can put some strings in there, and it's whatever it needs to go in there. And then the next thing is a common name, and you can see even as I was doing that there, as I add the next comma, you can see it moves on to tell me, okay, now you need a common name. So then it's whatever, leopard gecko. Yep. Uh, and so now when I come back to it, it works exactly as I thought, right? The species name shows up as species name, the regions show up as they were supposed to, and the common name shows up as it's supposed to. So now, because this data has been um, put into an organized manner, now you know when you're writing code that you don't have to try and guess what different variables are called and all that sort of stuff. And so for larger products, this becomes much easier to manage. Um, okay, let's take a look and see if there's anything that I forgot on there. So yeah, so self and instance versus class attributes. So basically, so within this, um, as I've shown you, so everything that has self means that it belongs to the instance, but you can also have class attributes. And so what that means is that, let's say I have something like um, a counter, let's just say, uh, counter plus, e oops, plus equals one, just for example. Right, and uh, let's just say, so off the bat, I'll have counter is equal to zero, right? Um, and so now this, what's the best way of doing this? Actually, let's just do this. So I'll have a counter variable, right? And so this counter variable is counter, there you go. So I have a counter variable, just for example, right? And so now uh, I've created a leopard gecko, and then let's just let's create like five or six more. And we'll just change this to be like one, two, three, four, just something like that, right? So there's five leopard geckos here. So now if I go ahead and I do uh, print animal dot counter, right? What I'll actually get is oh sorry, uh, local variable counter reference before. Ah, that's why. Animal.counter, just for example. Let's do that. And you'll see now I get five. And so what I can say is um, in here, let's just do another F string. We'll just say there have been this many things, this many animals created. And so there have been five animals created. And so you'll notice that this actually belongs to the animal class instead of a specific instance, right? So this might be a little bit confusing, but basically the animal class itself, this is being defined outside of it. And then inside of the instance, uh, this runs when the uh, class, it's, when the instance gets created. And so in here, I'm just upping the counter every time a new instance gets created. And that's how we ended up with five uh, animal counters. And that's how we know that there's five different animals. But inside here, I can say species name two, three, four, and five, just for example. And in here, I can do one, two, three, four. And so each of these instances, you can see now all has their own variable. Let me just slightly change these or something. Just so it's a little bit more obvious. I know I should have come up with some better stuff, but like, who prepares properly for their course? Uh, okay, there we go. There we go. Sorry, I keep hitting enter. Uh, there we go. 
right? And there's something in here. All right, so they all have their own variables now. So when I print this out, there's going to be a whole lot of nonsense in here. We can see it's all different nonsense is the big important thing. So they all have their own variables, but then the animal class itself can also own its own variables, right? And so you might be thinking, well, this is, I don't understand why this is useful. Um, but let's just say that all of your animals have something in common. So let's say, for example, um, well, this is a bad example, but let's just say, <clears throat> for example, we have something like planet is equal to Earth. <clears throat> and let's say this was like a class that was called like Earth animals or something like that, right? Um, then it might be useful, typically if you're going to do something like this, it's actually better to do it all uppercase. So we'll say planet Earth. And then what this, what this can be used for is that we now know that this is effectively a constant, right? This is never going to change. So we know that there have been, well, there have been Earth animals created. Um, we know for sure that this is always going to be the same for these animals, so it doesn't actually matter what's what's happening, right? So we get Earth, and we know. Um, a better use, a better example of this use case is actually inside the math module. So, in, so inside of uh, uh, math dot is it math up high? Hold on. Uh, Okay, took me a little bit to find it. So it is, uh, so inside the math module, so if we go import math, um, there is a constant in here called pi. And so if you're familiar with any sort of math, um, pi is a number that it doesn't ever change. It, it, is a, it is a mathematical constant. And so if we do math.pi um, and go ahead and run this, we get, no matter what we do, we always get the same number, right? And so uh, math.py would be a good use case for a class um, attribute. And so that's because it never it never actually changes. And so math, when you import it, um, actually, I cannot remember if math, math might be a class, I can't remember. But anyways, it's the same same idea. You could, you could have a class called math and then have a variable called pi. And that would be a good good use case for doing this, where you have constants that are going to be defined specifically inside the class. Um, one thing to keep in mind with this is that um, with any of these sorts of things, so if I go ahead and grab leopard gecko for example, um, leopard gecko dot, there's no, planet, right? Planet. So if I go ahead and grab leopard gecko dot planet, you can see um, I can actually access it. And so I am accessing the um, the planet variable from directly inside the instance, but if I go ahead and change it, so let's say for example, this, and I go leopard gecko one dot planet, and let's say I make the leopard gecko dot planet equal to like six, for example, and then go ahead and do this. What you'll see is that it actually creates a local copy of the variable as well. So if I try and access it inside of the uh, the instance, what you'll see is that it actually creates its own instance variable if you try and modify it. Um, so you'd have to modify it inside the class. So if I said animal six and then did it, now we'd get the changed variable. Okay. Um, so I'm going to not do data classes. You can read about them in the notes if you really want to. Um, they're kind of useful for some different things. Uh, but one thing that I did want to specify is, because I skipped over a lot of the information about the syntax, is I just want to go back and give you more information about the syntax now, um, just so that there's hopefully no ambiguity. Um, so the way that you create a class, I'll create one from scratch. Um, so yeah, I guess actually we'll, we can create a, a math class, although it doesn't really make sense to be. Um, actually, you know what? Let's create let's create like a, a shape. Let's create a square class, just for example. So we could do something. So the way that you would start this out is you'd say class, and then let's just say square, for example. Right, and then inside here, the same way that you would with a function definition or an if statement or anything like that. Uh, what you want to do is you want to do def and then double underscore init double underscore and then parentheses and so um these these two sets of double underscores these are often called dunder 
methods. Um, so anything that has a double underscore, there's a whole bunch of them inside classes. Uh, I'll show you one other useful one just so you can see what it does. Um, but if you hear me say dunder, that's what I'm talking about. Just It's a word with two underscores on either side. Um, and so one thing you can see here, it says uh, method has no argument. And so that error is popping up because we haven't given it self. And so self, again, like I said, that's how you say that you're creating an instance. And because double, uh, because dunder init um, creates an instance, uh, you want to have self in here so that it, it knows where itself is. Um, I'm not going to dive into technical detail. You can read up on what self actually does, but basically it just points to itself effectively. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> and then from here you can say whatever you want to give it. So let's just say, for example, we have something like width and height. So in here, uh, a common mistake that people do is I can actually just show you this right now. Uh, some people will now create one, so let's say like square uh, one is equal to square of like five or four and like six, for example. And then they'll try and do square uh, one dot width, right? Uh, and then when you run this, you see it says square has no attribute width. And the reason is, um, one of the kind of annoying steps that you have to do in here is you have to actually assign them all to their self variables. So you have to say self.width is equal to width, self.height is equal to height. And then now when we go ahead and do this, uh, oh, sorry. Now when we go ahead and do this, we can print the right variable. Um, so yeah, kind of annoying. This doesn't have to be the same names, by the way. Uh, it's just a common convention to keep them the same, but you can actually do like shorthands. Um, so you can do like W and H if you really wanted to. Um, I personally think this is a really bad habit to get into. Uh, and the reason is that when I'm looking at trying to create a square now, right? So let's say I have, I'm trying to create a square and then I have like four, for example, and then I do comma, oops, sorry square, it just says W and H, which is not very helpful. Um, so I don't know what these actually are, right? And this is where something like a doc string would be helpful. Uh, I think this will, yeah. Um, a class to represent a square, right? And then you can do, uh, actually you change parameters to attributes in this case. It's just a style thing. It's Don't worry if you don't remember that, it's not a big deal. W int or float. And then we just say the width of the square. And then we can just say h, which is the which is either an int or a float. And we can say the height of the square. Now for squares, they're gonna do the exact same. So we can actually, instead of calling the square, let's just do rectangle. Because I want them to be two different numbers, right? Um, but you'll notice down here, when we're calling it, because we've said self.width is equal to that and self.height, when we're actually accessing it, basically self gets replaced with whatever the instance name is. So when we're actually accessing it, we can do square one dot width. Um, and so yes, yeah, so this is uh, this is again why I say it's just often better to just do this, which leaves it with no ambiguity, because then when you have these here, you can just do that and that, and then now there's no ambiguity when you're looking at it, right? You know, okay, width and then the height. Okay, cool. I know what's going on. Uh, methods are pretty much the same as they are uh, with regular um, functions. So we can just do uh, def uh, area, for example, pass in self, and then we can just do return self width times self dot height, for example. And then now we can just do uh, print the, uh, we'll do an f string, let's say the area of square one is uh, square one dot area 
And then now when we go ahead, it says the area of square one is 24. So yeah, so there's the basic syntax for it. Uh, we'll get into the exercises to show you a little bit more. If you guys have any questions, um, watch the exercises first and then send me any feedback uh, either directly through the website or on YouTube with any questions. This is kind of a confusing topic, so just um, don't be too worried if you get a little bit confused on this stuff. All right, uh, let's get into the exercises. So, oops. we will just grab the exercises first. Nice. Okay, cool. So, inside, oh, I didn't realize the exercise has some date time. I will explain a little bit about the date time module. Uh, that's probably why I included it in the notes, actually. Um, okay. So, exercise one is write the estimate planks function so that it returns a correct number of planks. Use integer division to avoid complication. Okay, so we have some. So we have a class called a contractor, uh, and it's a demo class representing a construction contractor, okay? <clears throat> uh, with a plank length of an int, which is the length of the wooden planks in feet, uh, which by default is one, if you don't provide it. Uh, and then methods estimate planks. Uh, this is another good thing to do as well, by the way, for classes, is to stay w say what methods are included. If, it, if they're smaller classes, it's not a bad idea. Uh, and then this says estimates the amount of planks needed to build a structure based on the provided length. Okay. So you need number of planks. Oh, okay. I see. So Dave has a plank length of two. So each of the wooden planks that Dave has is going to be a length of two. Um, and then for estimating planks, we want to estimate how many planks it'll take to get 10 feet. So in this case, number of planks is just uh, length divided by self dot plank length. Uh, helps if you spell length right. And that should be good. Is that it? Oh, that might be it. Uh, oh, let me just quickly open up a terminal in the right folder. So, Python, Python 101 class exercises. Uh, you need five planks of wood to build the wall. It's supposed to be five, and you need 45 planks of wood to build the wall, which it should be 45. Okay, so I guess that one's done. Um, I think the error that's being thrown is from the later one, so... Um, yeah, okay, perfect. So do I need this? No, write a class. Is there any more? Take the previous user class. Okay, so I don't need the contractor class anymore, so I can go ahead and just delete this. I'll leave date time there, because I assume we'll probably need that for a later one. <clears throat> okay. Write a user class that has three attributes and one method. Uh, the attributes is going to be name, birthday, and uh, premium. Okay. Um, so that's pretty easy, so let's just go ahead and do that. Name, birthday, premium. Okay, and then we'll just do the selfs. So we'll just do uh, no. Okay, why? Okay, whatever. Self dot and then we'll do name birth day and what else cream equal to birthday premium and name okay so now we've got those set up which is what the attributes what they needed were uh, and then method one, next birthday, a method that returns a string of the user's birthday this year. If it's a day, then return happy birthday instead. Okay, cool. So we're going to need the daytime module for this. We're actually going to need a little bit of the daytime module for this. Um, so, uh, do, 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 do. Then what's this? Take the previous class number four and add a doc string to it. Okay, so we'll do that last. Um, let's just take a look at this. So, 
for next birthday. We are going to need, yes, yeah, so we have self in there. And so um, we're going to need to check the current year, which I believe is datetime.date.year. Yeah, OK. So this is the current year, right? And then we're going to have the birthday itself, um, which we already have the date for. So basically, I think we can just do this. So first of all, let's, let's deal with the if it's today, then print happy birthday. Um, so if self.birthday. Oh, this is going to be weird because it has to be the same month and year. Okay, dot month is equal to self, or is equal to, let's do this. So today is equal to date time dot date dot today. K is equal to today dot month and self dot birthday dot day today and date is equal to today dot date return birthday um, else come down here and then we're gonna take return basically the same two dates so date time Self.birthday.month self.birthday.date and then the current year. I think that should work. I think. Hold on, okay, let's see what's going on. What do we got? Built in method or object has no attribute month. Where am I looking? Uh, dot date. Dot. Oh, today is a function. Whoops. Is month a function? I don't know if month is a function. Hold on, let's see. Date time dot date. Object has no attribute. Date. Da, 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 da. So this is in line 26. Line 26. So here. So I don't understand because this, this one has a date. And you can actually check this as well. So why why is this happening? Birthday dot date. So dot year is an int. Is it dot day? Is that what's happening? Maybe. Let's see. Oh, I see. I'm being an idiot today. No, okay, it must be day. Okay, hold on. So this must be day, which make th means this must be day, and this must be day. 
Yeah, okay, that's what's going on. Okay, so there's the answer to that. Uh, now, what's the date today? So today is December 30th, so that's going to be 12.30. So we should, if I change this, now get happy birthday, which we do. Okay, cool. So that actually worked, which I'm kind of surprised at that I actually managed to do that from memory, so that's pretty good. Um, if you want more details and more in-depth for the date-time module, uh, you can go ahead and check out the extras section on the date-time module uh, to be able to do that. And uh, don't be discouraged if you couldn't figure out that last one. The last one was kind of difficult. Um, but let's get into doing the dog strings. So, oops, that's my bad. One, two, three, okay. And so, we want to have uh, represents a user of a website, just as an example. Um, attributes name, which is a string. I'm actually going to do this instead. I'm going to do the type hinting, because you can do type hinting in this, just uh, I forgot to mention that. Um, and you can actually type hint custom types as well, like that. So the date time dot date time, for example, you can do that as well. Uh, and then we can say bool. And so the name is going to be the name of the user. The birthday is the birthday of the user. These aren't great comments, by the way. Um, there's probably better information I can put in there, but uh, I just can't think of anything off the top of my head. I'm turkeyed out from Christmas. Um, uh, true if user is a premium user, else false. Okay. And also, then we wanted to have methods as well, because we do have one method, which is going to be next birthday which is returns the user's birthday in the current year. And since this does actually return something, we can do returns a string. Um, and then we'll just do this. Oops. Um, take this from before. And then we can just say returns a string with the user's birthday this year. Okay. And that's about it. Now we hover over this, it returns a string, we know what it does. And if we hover over the user class, we get information about what's available inside the user class. Um, one thing that's kind of annoying about this that I did just forget until now is that the type hinting doesn't actually show up here, you can see. So I guess my uh, my initial idea goes out the window. Um, it's going to be better to just do it like this, which is kind of annoying, but that's okay. Uh, so premium is a cool. Uh, yeah, there we go, just so that people can tell what type it is. Okay, so that was exciting. That was the exercises. Um, let's go ahead and let's move on to the challenges. Okay, let's get these challenges going. So, let's go ahead and download challenges. Hit keep, and let's go ahead and open up in VS Code. And, oh. Uh, is that a bug? Hold on, let me just quickly check the github post because I thought there was more. Let's see, I think I may have copied the challenges that were wrong, or is there really only one challenge? Oh, okay, there's only one challenge. <laughs> All right, it's called challenge three, okay. So uh, this challenge is very hard. If you've never worked with classes, give it a shot, but don't worry if you can't do it. Uh, okay. So this is going to be talking about inheritance. So this is going to be a very hard question, especially if you've never done any programming before. So the short and long of it is that uh, with inheritance, uh, it, it's what's called a pillar of uh, object-oriented design. And so what it what it allows you to do is it allows you to actually inherit attributes and methods and that sort of stuff from 
uh, other classes into a different class. Um, so let's see what it wanted us to do. So it wants us to create a product class that extends item. Okay, so let me show you what how this would look, and then I'll explain it. So class, so product, and we want it to extend item. And this is where it gets kind of weird. Um, thunder, it's thunder. Okay. Now I have to remind myself of some of this stuff. Actually, I haven't done any subclassing in a little while here. Uh, so the information that I've included here is we have, uh, they have, for example, a class person, and then you can do a student, and then give it the information, and it will call. Um, the print name method, and then if you want to do an init, dot under init, yeah, okay. So this is going to get kind of weird. So what we want is we want the category first of all, which is from the original class. We want self dot id is equal to y. Oh, there it is. There's the import statement. Uh, Nutritional information. So, nutritional information. Uh, expiry. Jesus. And what else? Okay, that's it. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, let me just quickly double check what the what it wants, yeah, so it's just super in the news. Okay, so this is gonna get kind of uh, kind of weird here. Uh, what we wanna do is we wanna pass category, and so what what's happening here is that we created something called product, right? And so in our original item class, we have uh, an ID, which is generated, we have a category, which is generated, uh, and that category is generated when um, the item is initialized. And so, because we've said class product and then we've given it item, uh, when we're doing our init, we pass the category to the product instead. Uh, and then we also pass it the additional information that we need. So we need nutritional information and the expiry for what we're trying to do here. And so we pass the category to what's called super dot dunder init. And so what this does is it basically goes, takes the category, and when it's creating this product, it actually creates implicitly one of these items. And so it goes and it calls the item dunder init method with a category, generates all this stuff, and then gives it back to our uh, product instance. Um, okay, so let's let's just quickly nutritional information is equal to nutritional information and self expiry. Expiry. Okay. So now, so we've got uh, we've got this stuff. Um, okay, this is like the the tag or whatever. So let's take a look at what we got. So let's just say um, eggs is equal to product of uh, category. Uh, I don't know produce. And nutritional information, I, I don't know. Um, let's just say uh, fat, we'll just make something up. Like two grams. Oh, whoops. Uh, let's do this in a string. Two grams, and then let's just say something like uh, uh, carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. And let's just say that's uh, like three grams or something like that. Um, and then the last one is a date time. So let's just do import date time. And then we'll just do date time dot date time. Uh, so we need a year. So let's just say 2019. We'll say a month. Let's just say December. And then let's say a day. Let's say 31st, just for the sake of argument. Okay. And then let's see what we got. So let's just print uh, eggs dot. Um, nutritional, inf oops, dot, nutritional information, uh, 
let's just make sure, basically let's just make sure that all this works. So we'll do eggs.nutritionalinformation, comma, eggs.category, I was called yeah, eggs.category, and eggs. What was the last one? Expiry. Okay, cool. There we go. So now let's see what happens when we. Oh, whoops, sorry. Uh, this is going to be challenges that we need. Name error. Item is not defined. Uh, that's because I forgot the capital I. There we go. Okay, so um, this is actually working exactly as we needed it to. So that's good. Um, now, what's the next thing that we need to do? A method that prints nutritional information of the values in an easy to read format. So let's just call it def print nutrition. And we'll pass itself. And what we'll do is we'll do for key in, in self dot nutritional information. Uh, uh, print f key do, 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 and then we'll do self dot nutritional information of the key. Just like that. Okay, so now let's see. So, eggs dot print nutrition. Oh, whoops. There we go. Finally got that right. And let's see what happens. So, we get fat and carbohydrates. So, that worked out exactly as we needed. Um, and so, basically, all that this is doing is it's looping over the dictionary, which is the nutritional information in itself. It's then getting with every time you loop over a dictionary, that's the key, and then it's printing the key, and then after that, it's going back into the dictionary and printing the uh, current value at that given key. Uh, and then we have the expiry attributes, and for a method that checks the current date and returns true if the product is expired and false if it is not yet expired. Okay, so def check. Expiry as itself. And so I guess we can first check the year. So that'll so we'll do this with a nested if statement, right? So if uh, uh, uh self dot expiry dot year is equal to date time dot date dot year. Look, let's just quickly move this up like that. And then um, date time dot date and then year is an int. Yeah, okay. So if it's the same year then we know that we should keep going, otherwise we should turn false. Because we know if it's not the same year, then then we know that it's... Uh, sorry, if, if the expiry year is... I don't want to do this actually. Um, so if the expiry year is oh yeah, less than the current year. So this is the current year. So if it's less than the current year, return true. So that means that oops, return true because that means that. Uh, well, we know that that means that it's uh, uh, in the it's it's already expired. So if the expiry year is twenty eighteen, for example, and the current year is twenty nineteen, then we then we know it's expired. It's expired by year. Um, and then if 
uh, we'll just do the same thing, but then we'll make this equal, because we have to check each of them, so we have to check the year, then the month, then the day. So self.expire year is equal to the current year. Then we want to go if self.expiry dot month is equal to date time dot date dot month and if self dot expiry dot day is equal to date time dot date dot day turn true. So if all three of these things are the case, then it returns true, otherwise it returns false. So this should, if we go ahead and do eggs dot check expiry, uh, then what we want to do is we want to do, oops, we want to do this, so that they're inside the brackets, and we want to do print. So this should print, uh, oh, sorry. Int and get descriptor. Self expiry. Oh, sorry, I forgot to do today. Uh, today is equal to date time dot date dot today. That is why. And I actually made a couple of mistakes here. So if it's the same year, then we want to check if the expiry month is less than or equal to that, and same with the day. We want to check if it's less than or equal to that. <laughs> yeah. And what do we get? What's happening here? Self dot expiry dot year. Why is it returning none? Eggs dot check expiry. Yeah. Okay. So do. do, do, do. Let's just get rid of these two real quick, so we don't need them anymore. So let's just, let's just focus on this. It's just returning none, which doesn't make any sense. Um, if the self dot expire dot year is today, oh, I see. Because for each of the oh, God, God, for each of these, we need to do this return false. And in here we need This is what kinda sucks about doing these nested condition statements is that they need to all match up this way. So now if we go ahead and do this, we get false. And then if we change this to, for example, the 30th, which is today, then it would expire. Uh, and if we change it to like something else, then it would expire as well. So that works. Um, yeah, this part got kind of complicated. <laughs> it's a little bit weird. Um, there are better ways of doing this. Actually, I think... Uh, okay, wait, hold on. I might be being an idiot. I think you might actually be able to just do this. Uh, if self.expiry is less than or equal to today, which I'm sure I think you actually might be able to just do this. Let's see. Can't compare date time dot zip. Oh, whoops. I just need date time dot date. I don't know why I had date time dot date time. Aha. Okay, so you can. <laughs> oh boy. So you can actually just do this. I don't know why I made this so much more complicated than it needs to be. Um, you could just check if it's less than or equal to. <laughs> And it'll work, and then if we do uh, the 31st, which is tomorrow, and then we'll go ahead and we'll get, oh, uh, oh, I deleted the other part of it, so I need to Yeah, 
there we go. So this actually works. So much simpler than doing that long, long conditional statement. We can just we can just do this, and it works pretty well. Um, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I apologize for any confusion that I may have brought with this, uh, but yeah, you can actually just do direct comparisons between dates in uh, using the date time module. So uh, yeah, hopefully I mentioned that during my uh, during my date time uh, explanation in the extras module. Otherwise, it might get a little bit a uh, little bit weird. So um, yeah, so so thank you for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this. Uh, module. Let me sure to stick around for the next one. The next one is going to be on. Let me double check. Python modules, which should be a, a fun one. Um, this is where Python really shines, is how its modules work, and uh, being able to get other modules from other people. Um, this is when it starts getting really fun in Python. So be sure to stick around and watch that. Uh, so yeah, all right. Thanks for watching.